This one's going to be an odd mishmash, but I'd like to talk to you about bananas, chimpanzees, homosexuals, the Cold Grove Hornets, and Ronald Reagan. You see, for most of my adult life, it's been a universally accepted scientific fact that humans and chimpanzees share over 96% of their DNA. This makes us amazingly similar. But I recently found out, to my, to my surprise and amazement, that we share over 50% of our DNA with a banana. With a banana. We'll get back to bananas. First, let's go back to high school. See, I went to South Point High School. And as I was continually told through high school, the South Point Pointers rule. And the Cold Grove Hornets, the Cold Grove was a town just up the road. The Cold Grove Hornets, they suck. They were inferior, athletically, physically, morally, spiritually, academically. And somehow, a cousin of mine who went to Cold Grove got through college quicker than I did. He also could have kicked my butt any day of the week until we were well into our 20s. How he managed to pull off these feats with a foundation from a school that was so inferior to us, who a school whose inferiority was claimed by 15 girls and matching outfits on the sidelines of a sporting event, well, how he pulled that off is beyond me. I have to assume it was a liberal bias or some conservative old boys network that helped him out. And within a few months of my high school graduation, Ronald Reagan made me cry. Now, making me cry isn't hard. I cry at a good movie, moving music can bring me to tears, and I frequently cry at weddings. I found myself in tears nearly every time I hear about War Dead. I'm a heterosexual, white-tail-hunting adult male, trained in more than one martial art, and uh, I've lived in homes heated by wood split by my hands. And I cried like a baby when Renee Zellweger said, you complete me. This is just part of who I am. Reagan, Reagan made me cry with a well-crafted speech. When he spoke the words, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Well, I, I knew right then, my adult life had hope. We were all going to start working together. We, we, we are the world. We, the people. I mean, Lionel Richie and Billy Joel wouldn't lie to me about these things would they? John Lennon was dead, but was still everywhere I turned, insisting we come together and imagine. A peacemaker's face made of squiggly rainbow lines seemed as prevalent and commercially viable as the Nike swoosh for just a, a few short years there. The late 80s and the early 90s seemed to almost audibly hear America letting loose a, a deeply held breath, one they'd been holding since the Cold War began. It took a, a more cynical human being to explain to me, years later, that the New World Order wasn't the kind of order I'd been hoping for. In some vein, I was disconcerted to learn that no fear wasn't about creating a, a safe environment for mutual respect. And I loved the no-fear concept when I first heard it. I wanted to live in a no-fear world. Eliminating fear seems, seems a better goal than eliminating mosquitoes, or polio, or the national debt or any of those other things we're supposed to be eliminating. It seems we'd traded Mr. Gorbachev's single huge wall for 10,000 electric fences, and it seems Americans started specializing in producing this fence. Monotheist versus monotheist, and you suck for listening to that punk band instead of this one. Uh, but for those paying attention, we get back to the bananas. It's as if we've chosen to eat together, and upon this decision, we all agree to come to the same city, we're on the same street, at the same time, and even at the same restaurant. We've all agreed on all of this, and having chosen the same table and the same seats and the same sandwich, we continue to break out in huge brawls over whether the person to the left of us is using enough horsey sauce on their chip beef sandwich. Think about it. The major conflict in the world seems to be between two monotheistic religions that both have holy texts claiming we shall not lie, kill, or be envious. Both groups tell me that greed is bad and compassion is good. Both claim an eternal reward for decent behavior, and we have folks lining up to kill one another and to be killed over who gets credit for commanding them to act decently. It's two men in the dark 
with a spare light bulb, refusing to put it in because they can't settle an argument over whether Edison invented the incandescent light bulb or perfected it. And they're arguing in the dark. I personally will attempt to find more similarities. When I consider that I'm 50% similar to a banana, I have to be able to find some common ground with you. Right? I mean, doesn't it make sense? Is it, is it not enough that we're already this similar? Is sharing the basis of biology not enough to bring us together? How about the fact that we share a small rock in a large, largely inhospitable universe? How about the sheer odds of the fact that you and I are alive at the same time? Now, I'm not asking you to attend a gay pride parade, and I'm not telling you to watch Fox News. I'm asking you to let someone else get away with it. My father stressed to me repeatedly that the only cause for violence is violence. Call me a name. I, I really don't care. Mock my shirt. I'm fine with it. Insult my mother. I don't give a rat's ass. Throw a punch and it's on. I've had my butt kicked before. I have no problem testing that again if someone else introduces violence. I think most people would agree. I don't want to fight with you unless the fight's already started. If we're going to attempt to take that one step further, I'm going to invite you to come along. How about we only be intolerant of intolerance? Can we, can we just try it for a little while? How about a big nativity scene in front of a city hall where gays can get married? I'll bring the bananas.